very good day to you and welcome to this week's edition of our weekly news roundup on Africa Today News New York. My name is Faith Aham and these are the stories that made talking points for us in the week that just ended. On Monday, we brought to you the report that former president of Nigeria, Olu Shegu Obasanjo, openly called on the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Mahmoud Yakubu, to save the country from impending danger by correcting the errors in the recent elections. That call was, however, not yielded to. On the same day, we reported that Nigeria's Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika, came out to admit that the performance of the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, LP, Peter Obi, has shown that ballots certainly existed on social media, especially Twitter. We also reported that PS diplomica Lionel Mercy on Monday night won the best FIFA men's player awards for 2022 on the back of his World Cup triumph with Argentina, while Spain's Alexa Puteas retained the women's award at a ceremony in Paris. On Tuesday, we brought to you the report that the recent presidential and national assembly elections held in Nigeria were described as far below the reasonable expectations of the people by the Christian Association of Nigeria CAN. The association called for the cancellation of the exercise. On the same day, we reported that Spanish La Liga leaders Barcelona have been placed under a transfer ban this summer due to the club's inability to rein in costs and manage their finances better. On Wednesday, we informed you that a former governor of Lagos State, the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress APC, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, was officially declared the winner of arguably Nigeria's most hotly contested and high-stakes presidential elections. On the same day, we brought to you the report that French President Emmanuel Macron came out to reiterate that France harbored no desire to return to past policies of interfering in Africa after he began a four-nation tour of the top continent. that in the aftermath of Nigeria's election exercise, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, came out to declare that he actually won the 2023 presidential election and will fight to reclaim his mandate. According to him, his mandate was stolen by people who Nigerians are supposed to be looking up to, which he can only retrieve in a court of law. On the same day, we brought to you the report that a Cambodian court sentenced top opposition leader Kem Soka to 27 years in jail for treason in a case rights groups insist is politically motivated. On Friday, we reported that popular social media critique and Labour Party supporter Aisha Yesufu came out to claim that a lot of polling unit results in last Saturday's presidential elections were altered, stressing that the election was mad by Regan. We also reported that the Supreme Court of Nigeria, in a surprising decision, declared as null and void the ban on the use of the old 200 naira, 500 naira, and 1,000 naira notes as valid legal tenders by the federal government. In a unanimous decision, the apex court, which was led by the seven-time panel of judges, justices, held 
that the old banknotes should remain in use until December 31st, 2023. Still on Friday, we reported that a prominent South Carolina lawyer whose name has been given as Alex Mudor was sentenced to life in prison over the murders of his wife and son on their hunting estate in a case whose twists and turns drew global attention. Finally, on Saturday, we informed you that the chieftain of the Labour Party, Professor Pat Utami, came out to call on the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to immediately commence the review of the election results in 12 states. According to Utami, the states include Lagos, Rivas, Delta, Imo, Aquaibom, Plutu, Benue, Kaduna, Adamawa, Taraba, Bayelsa, and Bauchi. Finally, we reported that the White House issued a 30 days notice to federal agencies to purge Chinese-owned video snippet sharing app, TikTok, from all government-issued devices, setting a deadline to comply with a ban ordered by the U.S. Congress. Now, that's been it for our weekly news roundup on Africa Today News New York. My name is Favor Aham. Thank you for watching.